Thank you very much, uh, colleagues, uh, media, for being here uh, this morning. Um, a very damp morning with so much rain, and you have been able to find your way here. Uh, we are very grateful to you. And uh, obviously, I want to thank the chair, national chair of the party, for being here and all the colleagues that uh, have been able to make it here. Um, I want to start by saying that um, all of the people of Zambia, by now, must understand, should understand, that the country is going through great difficulties over the years. Our country is experiencing a situation that we have never experienced before. Our people's lives, our people's lives have changed. And they've changed for the West. And we must all agree that. In order to save this country, 2021 is the year of change. I shall repeat that. In order to save the people of Zambia and the country from total collapse, 2021 must and should be a year of change. I believe that every Zambian, every resident of this country who has been observing how this country has declined under the PF leadership does agree to the assertion that 2021 is a year of change for all of us. So it's time for change to redeem the country. We also know now that nobody is spared from the economic decline. Nobody is spared from the fear oppressive leadership or lack of it for that matter. No one is spared other than a small clique of individuals that are living lavishly. When we all know that the few years ago before they went into government, their lives were not what they are today. You want to prove that? Just go to state laws area. Go to Forest 27, which they illegally acquired from the people of Zambia. See the mansions they are building there. See the roads, the type of roads, where your money has gone you will then agree that it's only a small clique of people that are living on the back of your sweat, your hunger, your children not being in school, and the youth not being in court. They've acquired a huge debt, which you are supposed to pay back. But that debt was not used for your benefit as citizens of Zambia. It was used to benefit a small clique of corrupt individuals. Greedy individuals who are going beyond making you suffer, but they are also brutalizing you from the marketplaces, from taxi runs, from bus stops, from public laws, as we have seen over the years. It is clear that 2021 should be as it was in the late 
50s, early 60s, when the people of Zambia were fighting for independence. So it was the people of Zambia on one side against the colonialists on the other. And the people won. As it was in 1991, when it was the people of Zambia against the one party state of UNIF, and the people won. So it shall be, and so it should be in 2021, when it will be here, a small number of people benefiting from our country's resources in here against the people of Zambia, all the central cities of Zambia all ethnic groups of Zambia. And the people, as this has happened before, as this one has told us, the people shall prevail, even under physical circumstances. Let me be a bit specific, so we put things in context. Let me be specific, so that we put things in context. Last week, Wednesday, was the dark day for this country. Last week, Wednesday, was the dark day for this country. It concluded that day. It brought to the fore what PF has been to this country over the years. It brought a message to citizens who doubted what PF stands for. You got your answer last week Wednesday, the dark Wednesday, where citizens, innocent citizens, were murdered. Execution staff by the PF government, the very people using the police instrument that should have protected life. We have a duty as a UPND government in a couple of months to come to protect all the citizens of Zambia. And never should anyone else die after that time in the hands of the state. This is state terror. That's what we can call it. There's no other name we can call it. This is state terrorism. But the Black Wednesday last week has made those who doubted what PF has did to this country believe and accept what we've been saying for a long time. That the state under the PF has been murdering citizens in court life. The murder of our two colleagues around the seat of government, cabinet office, the headquarters of the intelligence community in our country, around ministries, around embassies, 11 hours on that Wednesday, that black Wednesday. PF could not conceal what they were doing before as they executed Nsama and Sama, State Prosecutor, and Joseph Kaunda. A fellow citizen, a UPND member, but more important, a fellow citizen, a child of somebody, children of some people, mothers, fathers, their lives were ended on that last Wednesday. Those who doubted when we say the state was a killing machine, when they shot dead Martin Chibolo, 22, 23 year old girl, who committed no crime, you have your answer. You had your answer that black Wednesday last week. Those who doubted when we talked about the killing of Lawrence Banda, again around 11 hours in Kaoma, last year, you got your answer. The shooting down of a young student, Mugabe. You had your answer last Wednesday. 
Troisième étape. The fifth plus citizens who were killed under the scheme of gassing orchestrated by the PS, but meant to blame the opposition. God is great. It didn't work. And no other scheme to work where they're trying to frame us the opposition. When they're the ones responsible for the death of the 50 plus citizens under the gassing scheme. Some were killed by the mob. Others were shot dead by the police. But the genesis is that it was a scheme concocted by the PS government, which ended up in the death of many victims. You had your answer last Black Wednesday, if you doubted what happened that particular time. The list is long. The brutality we've seen amongst those in Sechega during the Sechega violence, where guns were blazing at 14 hours, hunting down innocent citizens. You had your answer last Wednesday. Men and women in, in the world praying in dollars, talking about the budget, 20, 20 budget. They were attacked in the church building. If you doubted why you were attacked, you had your answer last Wednesday. You have a fear government that is brutal. That's a killing machine. That buys more tear gas, more rubber bullets, more live ammunition than supporting the youth who are in school, to get them in school. Than creating jobs, than buying food, supporting agriculture to lower the cost of food, to lower the cost of business. They invest in oppressive capacity, using your money, not their money, your money, to cheer that to kill you, to assassinate you. For the first time, the PF government, via the statement issued by Isaac Chipande, dated 29th December, 2020, which document I have here. For the first time, the PF government, after killing so many people, admitted that Isama Sama and Joseph Kaunda were innocent citizens killed by the state. There is your answer. After denial over years that they were killing people. This is not my document. This is the State House document authored by Isaac Pandey. Special Assistant to the President, Press and Public Relations, State House. Here it is, your body as media. But for the region, for the international community, we now have a turning point in our country, where those in public office were denied, denying that they were not responsible for eliminating citizens, they at least have confessed to killing innocent citizens. The question is, what should we do from here? Today, we are offering, proposing measures that need to be taken to address this killing machine from the fear coming. We are saying the government must institute an independent commission to investigate last week Wednesday. Mother, excuse me. We must do that. What was done communicated to the public via this statement on the 29th of December 2020 is not enough to remove the deputies to the Inspector General of Police in the name, name of Ben Capeso of what is his name? Bon Capeso. 
is not enough. The removal of Eugene's water, another deputy, is not enough. As one newspaper called it, it's like healing, attempting to heal, to heal the diarrhea by closing the exit point of that diarrhea. You are not healing the diarrhea. It's a fundamental problem that needs to be dealt with. That's why we need a commission, an independent commission, a serious one this time around. Because you can't ask the police to investigate themselves. They are the ones that were used to kill innocent citizens. Hence our call for the independent commission. Let's assume that Capeso and Swarte, and indeed, whether it's in a removal or suspension of Nelson D, Commissioner Lusak, let's assume they were responsible. Are they the decision makers in the line? They are not. We expect that Kanga and the Inspector General Police must go. Because you would have issued instructions to these three or to the individual that pulled the trigger. If that is the correct chain of command, why should the Minister of Home Affairs, Champion, will stay in office? He too must go. That's the logical line of command. Champion must go. The question then, who issued the instructions? Because Kango, Kamchongo, Kandanja issued statements announcing that they will kill people before the Wednesday, the Black Wednesday. They premeditated this matter. So who authorized the two? Kandanja and Kamchongo. It's the commander in chief himself. Anyone with military knowledge knows that you cannot draw a live bullet from the armory without an explicit instruction from the command structure. So it tells you that if the whole PF leadership the government that agreed to execute Usama and Sama and Joseph Kabila. They are tired of hiding, killing in hiding. Now they are killing in the open. With CCT footage around that area. I was just a few meters away. I was caught in that minute. It wasn't my day. Otherwise, I shouldn't be speaking to you today. I should be dead. So what about Sam and Sam? What about Children's County? They are gone. We were all meant to be executed that day. Call to the police to answer trivial charges as an excuse to kill citizens by creating confusion. So hence an investigation, independence, is the way to go. That's why the time has lapsed when an instruction was given for the investigation, a full report. Because this statement talks about a factual report. But where's the full report? There will be no full report which is correct because the culprits cannot investigate themselves. There we are, the big of Zambia. And that is why 2021 is a year of change. It's fear versus the big of Zambia. Number two, the citizens of Zambia demand for a full reform of the police system. To move away from brutal force to that same community. We don't expect cosmetic changes. We have had so many cosmetic changes in the past. The people of Zambia do not need that approach anymore. Too much blood has been shed. Innocent lives are gone, young lives are gone. 
We cannot continue with cosmetic changes in the police system. Fundamental changes must be included, like yesterday. Citizens must run to the police when there's a problem, not running away from the police when there's a problem. Because the police is the killing machine under the air system. So we need a proper reform. Complete reform of the police system. There is need to strengthen the police internal investigation to independently control airing officers, especially those that use deadly force against an armed and harmless citizens, as we saw on that last Wednesday. Very important. Nothing short of this will be accepted by the people of Zambia. And the people of Zambia need to know that time has come to say no to what has been going on. This is the time. 2021 is the year of change. The has pitted themselves against the people of Zambia. We do not expect to go into 2021 with the continued abuse of the Public Order Act. The Public Order Act is now been turned into a tool, a political tool to oppress democratic rights, constitutional rights, civil liberties, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, freedom of movement, freedom of dress. We expect that going into 2021, citizens will dress in Catholic Ghana as they wish because that's their freedom, without risk being killed by fear tax, who have become law unto themselves. We don't expect that to continue into 2021. We do not. We expect a professional management of the state institution going to 2021. We must leave behind 2022, midnight today. All these evils. Let's free the people of Zambia. Let's give them liberty that they fought for at the time of independence, the independence struggle. We now are again freedom fighters. People of Zambia are engaged now in another freedom fight when we achieved our independence in 1954 through the 1963 election. But 54 years of West, this must come to an end as we go into 2021. Zambians are enduring an economic hardship. The depreciation of the quarter, high inflation, rising cost of living under the fierce leadership is killing Zambia. It's not just the bullets, rubber bullets which are being abused at close range, live bullets, tear gas, so those are poisonous gases. It's not just that which is killing citizens. It is hunger. Many citizens are unable to afford two, three meals a day. They go to bed hungry. That's who is killing people. Diseases are killing people because the man meant for medicines in hospitals is being diverted to buying guns. And cancer, as we saw on that Wednesday. This must come to an end. The high unemployment, the lack of jobs under the fear of leadership must come to an end. The high levels of corruption in the PF government that has led to a small number of people living lavishly when 18 million Zambians are living in squalor, living in poverty, must come to an end. That cannot continue. That cannot continue at all. I want to ask citizens of Zambia that take COVID-19 serious. We are all aware 
That is the new strain, a mutant that I'm told spreads much quicker than the one we knew earlier this year. This second wave under the new strain is deadly, is infectious. But you have a government that does not invest in protecting citizens against COVID-19, including a new mutant, but is focusing on killing citizens. It's focusing on buying more artillery. It's very sad. I never knew after 1991, after the end of the one-party state, that we'll have a government whose priorities are so wrong as we have today under the PF. I never knew. Indeed, I was wrong. I'm not the only one who was wrong. Many other citizens were wrong. Because we never thought that we will have a brutal government, a killing machine, a non-citizen respecting government after 1991. We thought that was liberation, freedom, had come. We were wrong. So protect yourselves. Follow the guidelines, health guidelines. We have relaxed as a country, but we don't have a government that will help us. It's not there. Because you people who don't care about you, about citizens, only for themselves. They only care about themselves, to enrich themselves. When you have a, a young minister, a party cutter who was nothing, six years ago, and is challenging citizens who complain about lack of money, that two million quarters is changed, is critical, then you know there's something wrong in the country. And terribly so. You're on your own. We are on your own, on our own citizens, in this respect. Continue masking. Continue keeping a social distance. Reduce on social gatherings. To protect yourself, to protect others. Because you have a government of the PF that does not care about the people. It doesn't even tell the truth of how serious the COVID-19 situation is in the community. There is a study that has been done by doctors. The report is out, which shows that close to 60% of the people dying in our communities could be infected with COVID-19. Now it will be worse. What have you seen in your government, in the PM government? No attention to that aspect at all. Just lavishing in abuse to suffer. We love you, the people of Zambia. We seek leadership to make your lives better. But we don't want you to lose your lives even before August 2021. So take care of yourself. Twenty twenty one is truly a year of change for Zambia. As I have said several times on this press briefing, is the PF best as the people of Zambia. All of the good people of Zambia, in all the ten provinces of Zambia, all the ethnic groups, because history has taught us that whenever there is a struggle which pits the people against a small group, as it was against colonialists, the people win. As it was against the one party state in 1991, the people win. So we will survive. You will survive. But you have to get together, you have to work together in order to win this freedom struggle across the country, across age groups, especially the youth. You are the owners of this country. You have a higher stake in this country. Biologically, you have a longer life ahead of you than all the people. That's biological, that's biblical. The Bible says very clear, God 
gives us an average of 70 years. Above 70 years is a bonus. That's God himself. So it means all of you under 70, under 50, under 40, around there, this country belongs to you. Take charge of your country. Deliver the change that is necessary for the reasons that we've articulated, for the ills that we've seen under the PF government. And no one has been spared. In the beginning, when we started talking, a number of people thought it was only HH and a few of us. Now you know. Even the villagers know that the quacha collapse of the quacha against the dollar, the dollar, which was five quarters, six quarters when BF took over office, now 21 quarters, is the one causing the increase in the prices of basic goods. So, salt, sugar, cooking oil every day. Even villagers now know that the PF is poor management, poor leadership, if there's any at all, which has damaged the quarter against the dollar, is the one causing the high cost of food, the high cost of living, leading to people eating less and less in homes. Even rural areas, no, because BF is running into rural areas to survive. Even the rural areas are aware that we have damaged this country. So the youth, this is a call for you to take your, your place, as it was during the independence talk. It, is, it was a young Kaunda. Kaunda became president at 39 years old. He was young. The winners, they were young. The Mangas were, were young. The Kamangas were young. The Kapwebwes were young. The call is on you. 2021 is a year of change. Deliver that change. And as change comes in 2021, as your PND, God's will, cut us of you, the people of Zambia. We promise you, we commit to you that the incoming UPND government will and shall deliver one, a vigorous fight against corruption. Corruption is damaging our society. Two, we will restore the rule of law. You can't run a country without the rule of law. That's what we've seen. That's why you see these killings. Some people are operating above the law. That will come to an end. So we assure you of the restoration of, in the rule of law. Number three, we will restore the freedom of speech and other civil liberties, regardless of your political affiliation. You should look forward to that. A change is delivered. Number four, we will deliver a robust economic turnaround. Number six, that turnaround economic turnaround will deliver jobs for the youth, for the women, for employable Zambians, will deliver business opportunities to all that wish to be entrepreneurs because we will have created that environment for you to get jobs, for you to, be, to enterprise, to be an entrepreneur. We will be able to deliver social value for all our, our people, all of our people, without discrimination. You should look forward to that change which will replace exclusions that we see under the PF now to inclusions, which will replace divisions with unity amongst our people across the whole country. Further, the UPND government as it ensures inclusiveness, it will address the importance of diversity, unity in diversity. We assure you that the UPND government will be inclusive, will be diverse to reflect the face of Zambia. At the cabinet table of the UPND, all the 10 provinces will be represented. You will see that down in government in the civil service, be it permanent secretaries, be it directors, be it assistant directors, be it 
and office orderly, you will see inclusion. Not the discrimination that we see today. Absolutely not. That will end with 2020 and a few months in 2021 before the change of government. We commit to you, the people of Zambia. You will see whether you're a single mother an orphan, double orphan, going back to school because the UPND government believes education is the best investment for children. And as I said already, after school, you will get jobs, but also create business opportunities for you. We will lower the cost of doing business. It's too high now. Very difficult to do business under the PF government. Absolutely. Extremely difficult to do business under the PF government. As we said already, zero tolerance to corruption because we want to save money lost in expensive roads, in expensive procurement of fire tenders. Just as examples, will be a thing of the past because we need that money to work for you, for you the people of Zambia. To work for this country, not to work for a small clique of individuals who are building mansions in State Lodge. State Lodge was preserved for a purpose under Kaunda's leadership. It's been destroyed now by greed, by selfishness, by corruption. Forest 27. Those things will come to an end. As we restore the rule of law, law and order, no abuse of the Public Order Act, you will have your freedom to get into a taxi of your choice without anyone harassing you. Ride a minibus. As we were taught now, any minibus that carries UPND supporters and members is supposed to be deregistered. Which law are they using? Minibus operators, taxi operators, bus drivers, truck drivers, your freedom is near. Your freedom is near. Citizens, your freedom is near. So you can go to a bus stop, intercity, without worrying about America 1, America 2, those thugs that are harassing people at intercity. Intertown bus stop will be free for all. And peace will prevail. Law and order will prevail. That is the package that comes with the change. 2021. You'll be supported in your businesses to get contracts. Preference will be given to Zambians and Zambian companies for contracts for goods and services. That's the way it should be. So it shall be. Land belongs to you, Zambia. Mining rights, minerals belong to you. The license will be granted to you. Where you have no money to work the mines, because you have a mining license, you can invite a partner, local, regional, or international, in a joint venture. But you will have the bargaining chip on your side. That's the environment that will bring. It doesn't matter whether you are young, whether you are middle-aged or old. Change to the European government will bring an opportunity for all of you. A good and responsible government that saves the people is waiting for you. But you have to deliver it. You have to work for it. You have to make it happen. You have to cause it to happen. That's a call for change. That's a call for your participation. I want to end by emphasizing that even with all these problems that you're going through, even with the poverty, with the hunger, with the squalor, with the violence, with the killings, I urge you not to be depressed. I urge you to stand strong, to stand tall. I urge you to have hope. Continue keeping your hope. 
Because help is on the way. With all these problems, all these dangers that PF has brought on onto us as citizens and residents, all these threats, the threats on people of different color, Campion was threatening people of a white color. You don't do things like that after you've killed citizens, innocent citizens. You must be remorseful. You must promote peace. You must call for stability. I call for stability because that's my duty. The PF government has shown that they have no sense of responsibility to anyone. And they are calling for more violence. They are calling for deportation, deporting who? Deporting investments. How will you create jobs? When you deport anyone who is an investor, one person, you are sending a message to all investors, including us local investors, that this is not a country where you invest. Are you surprised the economy has collapsed? It is because of this behavior. All of these things will come to an end. Pick up plan. 2021 is a year of change. Keep your hopes high because help is on the way. At the stroke of midnight today, my fellow citizens, at the stroke of midnight today, my fellow citizens, you should know that we've entered the year of change, the year of redemption, the year of law and order, the year of economic reconstruction. At the stroke of midnight today, know that we've entered the year of change. It's a PF versus the people of Zambia. And the people of Zambia shall and will win. Be strong. Look after each other. Tolerate each other. Guide each other, but tolerate each other. Don't fight amongst yourselves. Husband and wife. I know the economy is tough. Don't fight in front of your children, not even in your bedroom. You need to support each other now more than ever before. Encourage your children to remain stable. Don't allow children to resort into reckless smoking, drinking. Because it's difficult for young people. Because we are just at the cave of change. And we need you so we can offer you opportunities for a better life in all spheres of life. God bless Zambia. God bless our citizens. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for those that joined us later, you're welcome. We'd like to invite you at this time, if you have any questions that you'd like to address to the President. There were a lot of topics, specific issues that he addressed. Maybe you seek clarity on any one of those. The President is available to take those questions. Let's try as much as possible to stick to the topic for today. Um, that way the president can clarify. So thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you to all those that joined us online, uh, international media, local media, as well as radio stations. You are welcome. Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and I shall invite you at this time. Yes, please. Good morning, uh, Mr. President. Good morning. Good morning, Madam. Uh, uh, just a follow up. To this question, when you are calling for independent investigation, from the last time you said no need for investigation, but rather arrest and murder. And in the later that um, the response, I, I may call it the first response from President Edgar Moon on the investigation, has actually extended a hand whoever has not, uh, you know, helped in the, in the investigation with the police to do so. From your uh, narration, one would suspectedly say that perhaps Mr. Hichilema also can be part of um, 
you know, something that you can offer to the police to help with the investigation, or maybe not you, or are you encouraging your members uh, to do the same? If I can be allowed to ask, also the second question. In an event where you formed government in 2021, you have stated that you you have the economic focus. The Patriotic France, they have got the ERP, which they say is from 2021 to 2023. How are you going to turn around this kind of a program that is before us? I thank you, sir. Maybe before the president answers, would you just tell us your name? That way, uh, and maybe the station will come. I'm Pamela, the language from Ontario. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you very much. <coughs> Let's put things in, the, in context. In my submission today, Pamela, I have talked about action that you cannot remove Eugene's water, Bon Capeso, and indeed, Piri, Nelson Piri. I talked about the importance of acting now to remove, to, to do the right things, immediate things, to remove Kanganja. I think I said that. To remove Kampiongo himself, who continues to threaten people and looking for people to arrest instead of releasing people who were wrongly arrested. Because in their own submission panel, they've agreed that innocent people were killed. So why would you arrest those that survived the live bullets? Why do you keep them in detention? Why do you want to arrest more? All the people that escaped bullets, and you, as you saw it in the footage yourself, those colleagues were exercising their constitutional right, as Chito Teller has done when he's gone to court, as Chilo Piazitello has done when he's gone to court or the police or and corruption commission. As the late president Chinook, sorry, the late president Sata did, the footage is going round when the late Sata was being summoned to the police, supporters escorted him. That's their constitution right. But this letter confirms that innocent citizens were killed. So why continue persuade, pursuing innocent citizens? I did say my friend when Kashyant, that Kanganja must go, I talked to the command structure. But Kampiongo must go. He who issued instructions for the, with, for the withdrawal of live bullets from the armory must go. That's the command structure. No need to investigate that. So is the case for the shooter, the killers. I did say that the CCT footage there, Pamela. It is known who killed people. You don't need an investigation there. But what we need is an investigation that will lay out behind the scenes what was going on. What was the decision process? Who authorized who? There's a command structure. What reforms are needed in the police? That's the investigation that we're talking about independent investigation. The investigation by the police, which they were requested to, in their own admission, they are saying it's partial. It cannot be full, because you are asking the, basically culprits to investigate themselves. I refer to <coughs> a newspaper editorial that actually outlined and defined this process of asking the culprits to investigate themselves, and likened it to an attempt to heal, to treat diarrhea by closing the output of the diarrhea. I'm very careful with the selection of words. But everybody saw that editorial, what it meant. There's diarrhea inside PF. There's a disease inside PF. There's a killing machine inside PF. It can only be healed by a proper independent investigation so that we will lead to a full complement of the culprits up to the top. 
but also it will lead to reforms in the police system. I didn't mention that. So that never again will any citizen be killed in cold blood, execution style, by institutions such as the police that are meant to protect citizens. That's the point. That's the message. Could Richard be part of the investigation? I think I've articulated that in a way. I was a victim, together with Joseph Kaun, together with those that are nursing serious rubber bullet wounds, when rubber bullets are shot within 10 meters, 5 meters, they become lethal, embedded in people's bodies. Remember, Pamela, I went around to see this, the injured. I'm talking about the injuries that I saw myself. The UPND government, under our leadership, can never inflict such pain and damage to citizens who are already stressed by poverty, by unemployment, by hunger. You can't do things like that. I have said it. What I have said is known. They can take that. They can take that information. It's on footage. At that cabinet office, Pamela area, Nelson Piri came to block our vehicles. A good Samaritan did see footage of that. It's there. And when he blocked and his evil men under the instruction of Kanganja, Kampyong, and the commander in chief, they meant business. They meant to kill. I was one of the victims, the subjects. As Frank Tayari, a lawyer, escorting me to the police, was being threatened with life being terminated, his life being terminated, a gun was pointed at, first a pistol, and then an AK-47 pointed at him. Do you use an AK-47 against harmless people, harmless people, non-violent people? No, it was premeditated. That's the issue, one go behind the premeditation. Because Campion was saying it open. Kanganja said it open. And the you surprised, Pamela, is the country surprised that surprised that the commander in chief was conveniently out of town and Campion was conveniently out in Chizan to create a barrier as people were being executed. And at that point, <coughs> Frank Tayari was being threatened to his life terminated. You all saw it. If you listen to that footage, the audio, footage, video, I just took a chance, Pamela. I told my driver, just climb the cab now. These guys are going to kill people here. They'll kill us. The driver found a small space over the cab while they were focusing on Frank Tyler. I can say Frank Tyler he saved my life. And one or two, two of us, you see in the footage, two Hiluxes and my vehicle. So three vehicles <coughs> escaped there. It is us who escaped the killings there. That was a killing spot. They predetermined it. We want to know what was going behind in their mind. Who was issuing instructions? How do we reform so that in future nothing like that happens? As we sped off going to the police, I never went anywhere else. As a law-abiding citizen, I went to answer a police call-out. And I headed, I told the driver, head for the police headquarters. That's where our destination is. You will hear in that footage someone saying, shoot them, kill them, at least kill one of them. You hear. So that was the instruction. So no one should run away from that. So Pamela, there is the evidence piece of it, there is my participation. I want to ask the public here, how do we now go to the police when we are called out to answer police call-outs? When the call-outs are used as death traps, 
How do citizens go to answer police call-ups in the future? A guy like me, a person like me, who is being hunted day and night, even in this home I'm being hunted, you know what happened in this home? 10th April 2017, you know what happened here? This home was almost brought down. Now, how do you answer when there is a police call-out? When you know that a call-out means an assassination opportunity. That's what happened to Sam, happened to Joseph Kaunda, it was going to happen to me. And because it didn't happen to me, you can't say that I'm okay. I'm not okay because my fellow citizens died, innocent citizens, as Chipambe is admitting it. So, Pamela, there it is. PF is ERP. Let me put it a short form into the full nomenclature. I think you are, this is what you call economic reform program of the PF. How will the UPND have a robust economic general? First, you notice, Pamela, I did not comment to that economic reform program when PF issued it. I issued a very small, short response. I said, I can't comment about nothing. There's nothing in there to comment about. A year or two ago, they had another economic reform program. What did you see out of it? Nothing. More corruption, more greed, more, more killings. What is in there, Pamela? For us who understand economics and finance, it is nothing in there. It's words, playing around with words. There's no political will. There's no economic turnaround program in there. There's nothing. That's why they've been going to the IMF for a program. There's no program, because there's nothing in that ERP. The behavior of the PF government after issuing that ERP is more expenditure. It's more killings. It's more disrespect for human rights. It's more breakdown in the rule of law. An economic reform program under the UPND will be within the confines of the law. Rule of law. Pardon. It will be within the modern and sharp edge of financial modeling, including how to deal with the debt crisis. But that cannot happen without the rule of law. We will restore the rule of law. I've said it already. It will not happen without respect for human rights, liberties, and freedom. We will restore human rights, liberties, and freedom. It will not happen without dealing with the depreciation of the quach, the dollar. We will deal with that. It will not happen without dealing with the debt. What you saw in that nothing program is there's no way they can dismantle the debt problem. How can they dismantle the debt crisis? They're the ones who brought the debt. They took us into a debt crisis. How do we expect them to create answers, to find answers? They are not capable. They are completely incapable of doing that. So, Pamela, there is nothing in that ERP. If you expect anything tonight, midnight, tonight, to be 2021, eight months from now, is there a miracle that they can bring about which they couldn't do in 10 years? Nothing. I'm a philosopher in some way. I can give you a prediction. There's nothing in there. Put your hopes in the UPND economic, robust economic program. Thank you. Thank you very much. What we're going to do now, we will take three questions at once. Please limit your questions to one. Indeed. Be brief so that the president can take at least two sets of threes and we'll conclude our press briefing for today. So may I have the first three, your name and where you're coming from and the brief question. Yes, sir. Good morning. You are Lord my question uh, with looking forward to the changes in the, in the police service. Uh, Mr. President, I know you have experienced the leadership of uh, the new Deputy IG Operations, who was the Sata Promise Commission before, the, before going to Copacabana and now the promotion. Um, what do you think are the chances of the opposition of parenting uh, uh, under the fair dictates of the Public Order Act, and also considering that 2021 is an election year, how do you look forward in terms of that new election process? Thank statement? you, Logic. Thank you very much. Next person, please. Uh, second question. Anyone? 
Okay? Yes, please. Okay. Um, maybe only. I think for the purposes of the cameras, stand up so that the volume can be projected. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. I just want to find out, uh, you did mention on the issue of uh, the police intending to put an investigation into uh, the buses with the view of maybe uh, impounding the buses that were used to carry some kind of corpus and carry on the idea that uh, police. Now, do you have any plan, or maybe do you intend to, or what kind of help would you want to offer to these people? Because I'm sure they're going to be, if the buses are going to be impounded, I'm sure they're going to do business with another. Do you uh, have any kind of um, uh, help that you intend to offer? Thank you very much. We didn't get your next again. Mm -hmm. I said I'm also. Postwell. Postwell and two. Postwell. Postwell and two. And two. Okay. okay, the last question. There is no lady, so we balance the data. Pamela took all the. Yes, please. Uh, good morning. Um, Joseph Damat Banda from uh, QTV and QFM Radio. Uh, recently, I think that was on a Sunday, the church did make a call to all political stakeholders for a very effective um, dialogue and forgiveness amongst uh, political friends as we get into 2021. Do you adhere or do you agree with the church that there is need for Zambia to reconcile before 2021 general elections? And what's your call with regards to ending political violence? Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, colleagues. I'll be quick, very succinct on these ones. Um, logic, changes in the police. Um, I don't know whether you meant Katanga or something. I don't even want to mention it. Okay. Yeah. And any hopes or freedoms, you know, any hope of space, political space, democratic space. I think from my press briefing, my message today, it should not be the character or the name of who has replaced Capeso, who has replaced Eugene's water, and who will replace Kanganja? Because he must go. And who will replace Kampion? Because he must go. He must go. This must go. And the chain must continue upwards. I talked about the chain of command. It's not who replaces them and why we should expect better results. It's an indictment on Katanga and her colleagues who will be coming through in these positions to simply respect the rule of law, to simply protect citizens. That's their core duty, to respect citizens, to protect citizens. Katanga or whoever else, I hear it's a mwene or something like that, is not an issue for us. The issue is that they must respect the rule of law. The issue is that they must, amongst the laws they must respect, is the Bill of Rights in the Constitution, which confers citizens the freedom of assembly, freedom of movement, freedom of association, freedom of dress. To wear a UPND t shirt is not a crime which leads you to death. The team that has been brought in must protect citizens and their freedoms of dress and the right to peacefully demonstrate. They must do that. That's the core. Somebody issued a statement that the police will stop killing people. Another admission that the police have been killing people. So why should the police continue killing people who are exercising their constitutional right, legal rights? I urge the people of Zambia, exercise your rights. 
from midnight to night. The year of change 2021, exercise your rights. Dress in the path regalia as you wish. If what they are pronouncing themselves in the PF is correct, they will protect you. They should protect you. Even from PF facts, who are small in number, by the way. So there must be democratic space. We must all move where we want to, without restraint. That will be my answer to my colleague from Felix. Thank you for your question. Coswell, police impounding buses that may have carried UPND supporters. Any help to be rendered to this? You asked me the question, Coswell, the last question. I don't understand why you expect Againdi to give financial cash contributions to bus owners. And, and, and I know that's what you mean. I'm reading your mind. The help I and you must give them in this year of change 2021 is that they, if they moved UPND supporters in any way, they were doing their normal duty. What is the job of a minibus? a taxi, is to give a ride to people in exchange for a small fee. If they did that, they did that within their right. That's what their business allows them to do. PF card has hired these buses. I hope they pay, but I've been told by many drivers that they don't even pay. If UPND members and sympathizers did that, I, I, I'm sure they pay. They met, they met their obligation to, for receiving that service. Koso, hear me out. So what else should HH do? I will do something. Maybe you're right. What is that? Is to tell the police they are breaking the law. They cannot impound those buses if they were involved in that. Freedom of movement under the Constitution goes well. Says, I can move on foot, I can crawl, I can move on my back, I can move on my acrobatical on my arms. That's my right. There's no law that restricts me from doing that. I can move by taxi. I pay a taxi driver or negotiate. That's a law. If the police impound the buses, they are outside the law. And we have declared already that 2021 is a year of change. Part of the change is to operate within the law. Who? All of us, including the police. So tell that police officer that you are outside the law. That's what HHS said. On behalf of the bus operators, on behalf of the drivers, on behalf of the conductors, who are already suffering. They can't earn enough money to feed their children. If they carry the UPND sympathizer, very good. Within the law. And if they were not paid, I will pay them. You have heard, sir. I will pay the taxis, the bus driver, if they were not paid by any UPND member or supporter within the law. The contract, you jump on a bus, you must pay, you drop at your destination. If they were not paid, I will pay. Daddy will pay. <laughs> That's the only obligation I have to the taxi drivers. No one should impound those buses. If they do, again as a law, I will do something. Number two. After Bali has paid, Bali will also find a lawyer for those taxi drivers bus drivers and bus owners, I will pay the lawyers. That's my second commitment. But now no, the second must happen because no bus should be impounded. Freedom of movement and usage of the mode of transport is my right. Is everyone is right. Why do they bring tankers to the roads? They drove tankers you've never seen before. They were flying over. For your information, media and the people of Zambia and the world at 
at large. When I was being interviewed in the police, interrogated by the police in police headquarters, the PF through the police were intimidating my family in this home. They brought a helicopter here, scaring off my children and my wife and workers here, flying very low over this roof, over those trees. Not once, not twice, several times, intimidating innocent citizens. That is it. Because well, that's what you should be concerned about, and other citizens. Any bus that will be impounded, please let us know. We have rights for you. If you are not paid, we'll pay you. I guess you were paid. You did a good job. Continue. Continue doing a good job. PF members were demonstrating against HH. Because, well, didn't you, didn't you see that? They walked and some had buses, hired the same buses to State House and delivered the petition that HH stole money. I'm not a thief. I was brought up decent, cultured, hardworking. That's all I know. That's what I want to bring to this country when our time in office comes. Hard work, smart work, productive work to create opportunities for all of you. No one was tear gassed. No one was arrested. No bus was impounded. So what's the issue now? What's the beef? What's the beef? Oppression. Dictatorship. It's time for change. Joseph, the church made a call for all political players to dialogue. A call to end political violence. I have said that 2021, part of the change, Joseph, is to end violence, community violence. I talked about citizens going to bus stops without anyone beating them, going to a taxi run, going to the market, I talked about it. So it means that the call by the church to end violence, political or community violence, is sitting right within what we believe in. So yes, I'm glad the church is saying it. Again, because they've said it before. But this time round, we must not just say things. Part of the 2021 time for change, year of change, is to act to end violence in the communities in the markets, in the bus stops. I even mentioned America 1, America 2 at the intercity who are beating and terrorizing people. There's a place in Lusaka, Joseph called Kamgodi, where PF cutters armed with pangas and guns abduct people from the streets of Lusaka and take them to Kamgodi and torture them and detain them in an illegal detention center. That too should come to an end. That come God must be shut from midnight today. The church and all of us who love peace and those who call themselves professional policemen, and there are many professional policemen who are just being polluted by a few PF cadres who are wearing police uniform. We offer our gratitude to professional men and women in uniform who have been acting with very bad political instructions 2020 and going backwards. But going forward, start saying no to illegal instructions, like shooting someone, shooting Joseph Kaunda. Say no to wrong and unconstitutional illegal instructions in 2021, from midnight tonight. So that come body, my friend, must shut. The call for the church for dialogue, we've always been available. Always. Joseph, always. Remember Commonwealth? We are supposed to help us with the dialogue. PF refused. The church dialogue, led dialogue, we signed up. We even went to the cathedral on the day of the launch. The PF walked away. On the day of the launch of the, the dialogue. PF, grow up. You're hating citizens. Grow up. You're occupying public office, not family office, not mother or father's office. You're occupying public office. You belong to 18 million of them. Grow up, come forward, come for dialogue. We are available, meaningful dialogue. But we must implement 
the dialogue resolution, which includes ending violence, release of political prisoners, which includes stopping retiring people in national interest, yet it's in private interest in the public service, in the local government. Stop separating husband and wife by unreasoned transfers. You are hurting families, you are damaging families. Come to the dialogue table, you will find us there. We will not find you there because you drag your feet, you will find us there. But I want to encourage the church to walk an extra mile and make sure that from midnight tonight, they put in a process for that, will be abided, will be supported 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time and to manage our remaining activities for the day, that will be the end of questions. But we want to thank our, our national <coughs> professor, Madam Karina Mango, uh, for being here. Thank you, ma'am. Also, we have UPND spokesperson, uh, Mr. Charles Kakoma, who was here with us, and media director, Madam Ruth Dante, who was here amongst others. And we also have a presidential spokesperson, Mr. Anthony Walia, who was here with us. And with those three uh, senior members of the party, they can attend to some of your uh, remaining questions, so that we can also give you time to go and edit and put everything together. We want to thank uh, members of the media for coming. We also want to thank President Akainde for hosting us, sir, for always being generous. And uh, thank you so much for the elaborate speech to the nation of Zambia to give us hope. Before you go, ladies and gentlemen, there is some food that has been prepared for you. Uh, please don't rush, and uh, I can see somebody really smiling there. Uh, thank you to our president who has given us